amount of DHT available in my blood. It doesn't really take care of other hormones like testosterone or even the available DHT that is still left in my bloodstream. So anti anti What is up guys and welcome back to the fifth installment of my hair loss treatment vlogging. Currently I am at my sixth week of my pilot to my trial and I've finally had enough time to do a more serious hair loss protocol. And since I'm switching things up again, I thought it'd be a good time to elaborate a little further on my current protocol. So I'm going to do some more elaborated videos on each treatment and therefore I'll try and keep these blockings to a bare minimum and keep them simple and general. And at the end of the day, the main reason why I started this vlog was to keep track of my Paolo to my treatment and see how things went along with my hair loss. So furthermore, my protocol is also detailed down in the description. So instead of taking notes, you can just skip ahead to the description and just see my entire protocol down there line by line instead of taking all kinds of notes if you want that as well. And of course, before I start the list, I know a lot of you are going to ask me why I'm buying these things, so therefore, before you ask me, you can check the description down below. I have put in links for each of the items that I'm using in my protocol as well. So the first thing I always make sure to stack my protocol with is a 5-AI inhibitor. In my case, I am using finasteride at 1 mg daily. The reason why I'm going with 1 mg compared to 5 or even something like testosterone is just simply because I really don't trust all the data we currently have on DHT and the body. And I know some guys like Kevin from Hair Cafe, I think that's his name, loves to talk trash about DHT and explain why finasteride is the best ever drug in the world. And on the other hand, we have guys like Derek from More Plates, More Dates, who doesn't even touch finasteride with a five foot pole. But instead, he has been using something like IU58841 for years. And for me, I'm a bit of both. Hence, I do take the finasteride but I try to keep it to the FDA approved version, hence I'm using the one milligram. Mostly because I really want my hair that bad, so I'm ready to take a little gamble, but I'm not ready to make a big gamble like to test a ride. That would be a big gamble in my eyes. So the second item in my stack is of course my androgen antagonist. Personally, currently I'm using the KX826 aka pyrolutamide that you see here and a KNB solution from Anagenic and both I have bought at Anagenic and if you want to as well you can get a 10% discount with the code up here. So while finasteride reduces the amount of DHT available in my blood, it doesn't really take care of other hormones like testosterone or even the available DHT that is still left in my bloodstream. So antiandrogens like pyrolutamide can be a massive player and a massive determinator and whether you just hold your hair loss or if you begin to get some hair back or some hair density back on your scalp. That's why I'm currently using 5 mg daily of pyrolutamide in the KNB solution. So the third item is my microneedling. Now microneedling has been established as a promoter of hair growth, although in seemingly unknown ways for the time being. So I microneedle my scalp two times weekly at one millimeter for 10 minutes or I try until it becomes too hard to keep on going. And yes, if you're doing it right, it is going to hurt a lot. If you want to know more about microneedling, just check out my video up here. Here I explain the fundamentals on how to do microneedling and how it works. So the fourth item on the list is a combination of two. The first one is Nysol and the second one is shampoo. So I use Nysol once a week to keep dandruff to a minimum and also keep the microorganisms living in my scalp to a minimum. Microorganisms has been shown to increase inflammation. Now inflammation increases the response to DHT and the response to DHT then increases inflammation in the scalp. So it's important to keep the sources of inflammation to a minimum. And then regarding my shampoo, the one I'm currently using is from a Danish company since I like to support small small and upcoming companies with potential. But the main ingredients I'm, I'm usually looking for is that it contains peppermint and caffeine. 
both helps to increase blood flow and hence increase the nutrients to the hair. But I usually also like to look for a vegan shampoo to avoid too many chemicals in my scalp. Now instead of linking to this one in the description, I have linked to a very decent replacement that is available for everyone around the world through Amazon. So the, the one I'm linking to is not the same as this one, but it is comparable as good as this one. The last item on the list is NMN. Now I'm not going to try and pronounce the full name of this drug. Nicotinamide, nicotinamide, nicotinamide mononucleotide, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Now I won't be getting into details on what this drug is besides the fact that it's very well known in the anti-aging community and is written about in this book by Dr. David Sinclair. Now, Dr. David Sinclair is also a gene expert and anti-aging expert, and in my opinion, is one of the greatest researchers we have in the field. Hence, why I have his book and why I read the stuff that he publishes. I can also tell you that there are studies where NMN is included for hair loss being done at the moment and have been done. I have linked to one of them down below. So just to sum it up, I currently use 100 milligrams of NMN a day in a cup of water as soon as I wake up, since NMN is best taken on an empty stomach. And there you have it, that's the whole protocol that I'm using for now. The second part of this video is of course my progression photos, and currently things are still looking very much as status quo. Nothing new, but nothing new is also nothing bad. So I'm not worsening, but it doesn't look like I'm progressing anywhere, but it has only been six, six or seven weeks at this point. Some of you guys have been asking for side effects. I haven't gotten any side effects at this point from Pavlutamide, except a little dry scalp from time to time. I'm closing in on week seven now. It is Monday in 20 minutes, so I'm very close to week seven. So I'm almost through one third of the same time frame that Kinter used in the study that we had a look on earlier. So what I'm definitely expecting is to be able to show some difference when I reach the time limit for the study. Of course, I will be sticking to my Paulutamide even after that. But guys, besides all that, that is all I have for today. You know the drill, if you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, and you know, do all that to support the channel. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.